I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brothers asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope you're having a good time. Today we are going to talk about a very important topic. The most important man in history, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He's perfect in everything. He's so handsome. His eyes like the wings of a big bird. His lips are so beautiful to the point women they want to kiss them non-stop the angels they love him Allah he is crazy about him if I describe for you no description can make it really good So I'm going to borrow a video of someone in the internet. He made a video about Muhammad, that he is the best man before. Let us see uh, what this video is saying. Oh, not this one. This one. Here's a question for the men who are watching. Suppose you're walking down the street and you see a beautiful woman. What do you do? Some of you are thinking, well, I'd ask for her number or try out my awesome new pickup line. Yo, baby, how you like your eggs in the morning, scrambled or fertilized? But what if you're already married? What do you do then? Do you still ask for her number or use a lame pickup line? All right, here I am. What are your other two wishes? If so, then you're a total dirtbag. Unless you believe in the Quran, which allows men to have up to four wives. In that case, you could already be married and still approach a woman as a second or third or fourth wife. So you could ask her for her number or try out an Islamic pickup line. Are you sure you're not the prophet? Because you robbed my heart. Yo, girl, you want to share my prayer rug? Girl, I know you're a Muslim because your body is slamming. Are you sure you're not the shaitan? Because you fell from Jannah. Yo, girl, I know I'm only allowed to marry four, but you're a 10. I like your burqa. I'm wondering if I could talk you out of it. Girl, I need to break my fast. Can I have a date? Are you sure you're not the black stone? Because I just want to give you a big slobbery kiss. Mm. But suppose you're a Muslim and you've already massively exceeded the four wife limit. Suppose you already have nine or 11 wives, not to mention multiple sex slaves. 
You're walking down the street and you see a beautiful woman. What do you do? Fortunately for us, the Prophet of Islam has the answer. He always does, doesn't he? Sahih Muslim 3407. It was narrated from Jabir that the Messenger of Allah saw a woman. Then he came to his wife Zainab, who was tanning a leather, and fulfilled his desire. Then he went out to his companions and said, A woman comes in the form of a devil and goes in the form of a devil. If one of you sees a woman, let him go to his wife, for that will repel what he feels in his heart. Now, what does Muhammad mean when he says that having sex with his wife will repel what he feels in his heart? I think it's obvious, but he elaborates in Sahih Muslim 3409. Jabir said, I heard the Prophet say, if one of you likes a woman and feels attracted to her, let him go to his wife and have intercourse with her, for that will repel what is in his heart. So Muhammad saw a woman and he was attracted to her, sexually. So he went to Zainab's house. She was busy working, but Muhammad made her stop what she was doing so that he could have sex with her. Then he went and told his followers that a woman comes in the form of a devil and goes in the form of a devil, and that if a man sees a woman and is attracted to her, he should run home and have sex with his wife because that will help alleviate his sexual desire. All right, there's a lot to think about here. Let me share my thoughts. First, take a look at the chapter heading for these hadiths. Recommendation to the one who sees a woman and is attracted to her to go to his wife or slave woman and have intercourse with her. Again, this is about Muhammad, history's greatest moral example, being sexually aroused by a woman and then running to Zainab to, quote, fulfill his desire. Notice that a man can run home either to his wife or to his slave girl. Yes, Islam allows men to have sex slaves. But David, I thought that Islam abolished slavery. Well, Islam did abolish slavery in one particular area, fantasy land. Here on Planet Reality, Muhammad and his followers bought, owned, sold, and traded slaves, and they had sex with them. Second, how much self-control and willpower did the Prophet of Islam have if he couldn't see a woman walking down the street without running back to Zainab's house and saying, Stop what you're doing! There's an emergency in my thawb! I need you to get into the bedroom because I can't stop thinking about this sexy woman I just saw. To be fair, I think that if you don't have much self-control or willpower and you become sexually aroused while running some errands, you should go to your wife instead of sitting around obsessing over the woman you saw. But think about this. How many women do you walk by every day? Probably a lot. Do you have to run home every time you see a woman? And keep in mind, Muhammad saw a woman in 7th century Medina. She would have been dressed pretty conservatively, but Muhammad still couldn't control himself. This means, of course, that you and I and pretty much everyone we know have far, far more self-control, sexual self-control, than the greatest man who ever lived. Third, on this particular occasion, notice which house Muhammad went to. He went to Zainab to fulfill his desire. Who was Zainab? Zainab was the former wife of Muhammad's adopted son, Zayd. One day, when Muhammad went to visit his adopted son, Zayd, he was greeted by Zayd's wife, Zainab, who was wearing very little clothing. What happened next? We read in the History of At-Tabari, Volume 8, Page 2, She jumped up in haste and excited the admiration of the Messenger of God, so that he turned away murmuring something that could scarcely be understood. However, he did say overtly, Glory be to God the Almighty! Glory be to God who causes hearts to turn! What do you think the narrator means when he says that Zainab excited the admiration of Muhammad. 
Long story short, Muhammad's adopted son Zayd heard that his adopted father slash prophet was lusting after his wife, so he divorced her so that Muhammad could have her. People complained about Muhammad marrying the wife of his own adopted son, so Muhammad abolished adoption in Islam. What a prophet. Putting all of this together, Muhammad saw a woman walking down the street, and he started lusting after her. So he ran to the house of Zainab, a woman he married after breaking up her marriage by lusting after her. Wow. No wonder Allah says in Surah 33, verse 21 of the Quran, that Muhammad is a wonderful pattern of conduct. He sure sounds like one. Fourth, when Muhammad saw this woman walking down the street, and he had to run to Zainab for some relief, he already had somewhere between nine and eleven wives, not counting his sex slaves. And Muslim sources report that he would have sex with all of his wives in one day. Sahih al Bukhari, 5068. Narrated Anas, the Prophet used to go around, have sexual relations with all his wives in one night, and he had nine wives. Sahih al Bukhari, 5215. Narrated Anas bin Malik, the Prophet used to pass by, have sexual relation with, all his wives in one night, and at that time he had nine wives. Side note, check out the chapter heading. Whoever had sexual intercourse with all his wives and then took one bath only. Yes, history's greatest man would have sex with nine women, but would only take one bath. Can you imagine what he would smell like when he was climbing on top of poor wife number nine? This is Allah's pattern of conduct. Sahih al-Bukhari, 268. Narrated Qatada, Anas bin Malik said, The Prophet used to visit all his wives and around during the day and night, and they were eleven in number. I asked Anas, had the Prophet the strength for it? Anas replied, we used to say that the Prophet was given the strength of 30 men. And Said said on the authority of Katara that Anas had told him about nine wives only, not 11. Muhammad was having so much sex that his followers were bragging that he had the sexual strength of 30 men. And keep in mind, we're ignoring the sex he had with his slave girls. And yet, despite being the most oversexed man in the world, he couldn't see a woman walking down the street without going into a sexual frenzy and running to one of his wives. If someone were to make an accurate film about the life of Muhammad, it would be on a porn site. Fifth, in Islam, women are required to cover themselves. There's some dispute as to whether they can leave their faces uncovered or they have to cover their faces as well. But think about why they need to be covered. Who founded this religion? A man who would lose his mind when he saw a woman walking down the street. So I ask the Muslim women who are watching, what's the real reason you cover yourselves? The real reason you cover yourselves is that your prophet couldn't control himself around women, so he demanded that women cover themselves. Muslim women have been covering themselves for 14 centuries because their religion was founded by history's greatest horn dog. Sixth, to you Christians who are watching, can you even imagine reading something like this about Jesus? or about Peter, or about John, or about Paul? Can you even imagine having to read about Jesus, seeing a woman, and then having to run to have sex with another woman, and then saying that women are devils? We don't have to deal with this, because the key figures in our religion were men of integrity, men of honor, men of self-control, not the epic pervert who stands at the center of Islam. Thank God we don't have to follow Muhammad. So those were my thoughts when I read Sahih Muslim 3407. But over the years, I've learned one thing from the comments section. Other people notice things that I don't. 
So, in the comments, please share any additional insights you've drawn from the Hadith we started with. As an added bonus, the apostate prophet and I agreed ahead of time that we would both make videos about this Hadith. We didn't confer on what we'd say in our videos beyond the passage we'd be discussing, so I have no idea what he's going to say in his video. Let's all click the link and find out what AP's got to say about his former prophet lusting after some random woman. I hope to see you there in the comments section. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we just brought back uh, David Wood for you. The Muslims are happy that they don't see him no more, so we brought him back. Now, he said many great points, but he made a mistake. Uh, he said that uh, the Muhammad, he ordered women to cover themselves because he don't have self-control. Well, obviously, Muhammad is a pervert, and he will not do such a thing, I mean, to order to cover himself. The reason for Muhammad to cover the women, or to cover the, the hijab, is because of Umar. Umar ibn al-Khattab, he is the one behind the order of covering the women. Umar, he used to go to the house of Muhammad, and he used to flirt with the wives of Muhammad. Uh, once Umar, he came to the house of Muhammad, and his wife, Sauda, she was doing poo-poo, and Umar was staring at her ass. And this is the hayat in front of us. And Omar, because he's a very filthy, low, you know, low-class person, he did not hesitate to say to her, to talk to her while she is doing poo-poo, and the story is in front of you. Uh, Aisha reported, the wives, actually you can see, read the title here in the top, chapter permissibly for women to go and out to relieve himself. So imagine, they have a chapter about doing shit. This is Islam, you know, what you expect. Shitty religion, shitty chapters, shitty prophet. Uh, Aisha reported that the wife of Allah, Messenger, used to go out to cover and in the cover of the night when they went to open, uh, so they went to open field in the outskirts of skirt of Medina for easing themselves, like, <clears throat> you know. Umar al-Khattab used to say, Umar al-Khattab used to say, take a note, used to say, which means he always do that. Allah Messenger, ask your ladies to observe veil. So what this hadith here is saying to us that the wives of Muhammad, they use, uh, they, they wear clothing which is not decent. Uh, maybe they are dressed like hookers. Maybe they are dressed in a, but it, obviously they are not dressed right. And Omar is asking Muhammad, not the Muslims, is asking the one who's supposedly in charge of religion, he's the prophet, tell your wives to observe veil. Each time Omar he come, he said to Muhammad, tell your wives to observe veil. Now ask yourself why Omar, he is saying such a thing unless he sees something not right. There's something not right. And Omar, obviously, uh, he is a very filthy man, so he want to make himself that he is not a pervert who is coming and spying at the wives of the, his friend. So after he look and after he flirt and after he say what he say, he go inside the house so the husband will not be upset. He says, Prophet, tell your wives to observe veil. And this is exactly what happened in this story. But Allah Messenger did not do that. You ask yourself why. So Muhammad, he don't like the veil, so David Wood was wrong. It's not Muhammad, he don't like it. He like women to walk naked, actually. If you remember, if you have my book, Section of Allah, you will see that there is a woman, Muhammad, he, you know, he wanted to F her, excuse my language, because he saw her naked, walking naked around the Kaaba, and she was singing a point that everything we have, we show it, but it's not available. This is the song. So we show it, but it's not to F. Why? Because now she is doing a ritual going around the Kaaba. If you remember that the Muslims are nothing but pagan like the Arab, nothing changed. They used to go around the Kaaba totally naked, wearing no clothing. So this is a society, they don't care for hijab, they are naked people. They go naked, totally naked. 
around the Kaaba, as you see, and this is Sahih Muslim, this is official. Uh, it says, Hisham narrated from the authority, etc., etc., that when Quraysh, Quraysh is the family of Muhammad, all, all Muhammad family are Quraysh, and their descendants, they, they used to go around the Kaaba naked, naked, do you see it? Totally naked, in the state of nudity, naked. So this is a religion, and this is a society and a community where nakedness is not even big deal, you know, before the bikinis exist, they are totally naked. So women and men, because the Kaaba is a sexual temple of worship. You see the Hindus, they have a temple for sex. Sexual object is put there, and they have a penis, and they have a vagina, and it have a name. And those who know the name, they can post it for you in the chat. And you can check the images. Muhammad, he himself, and his followers, obviously, they copy from the Hindu, the sexual religion, and they have a black stone which present the vagina. Women, when they cannot have babies, they go around the Kaaba totally naked, and men, they go with them, and even they do have sex. There's different hadith that says that the Muslims, and this is after Islam for sure, they used to go around the Kaaba, and their penis is a dripping sperm. I'm trying to find you the hadith. Okay. Here we go. This is Sahih hadith, so the Abdul, they cannot say to you, it is da'if and all the garbage, you know? Yeah. This is Sahih al-Bukhari as an example, hadith number 7376. It says, this man, he is speaking now, what the Muslim they practice. We used to go around the Kaaba, we do the Ihram, uh, and then what, what, what will happen exactly when they are going? Let us see if that part, they took it off. Uh, let us go up. Mm, here we go. We go, we, we used to proceed to Arafat with our male organs dripping with semen. Do you see it? Their male organ dripping with semen. So the best man and his companion, obviously, they are the best dripping organ with semen around the house of Allah. They go naked, they if each other. The black stone is a vagina. The prophet is the most powerful man in sex. And this is telling you what this religion is about. What kind of followers they are proud? Let us say, let us say those stories is true. Like Muhammad is so powerful in sex. Why they are so proud about his penis? You see, we are talking about prophet of God. We are not talking about somebody he is a pervert in a Playboy magazine. A pro, you know, a, a prophet of God, we will speak about how decent he is, how much he pray, how much he is, uh, you know, loyal to, to his God, uh, how much he uh, did sacrifice, you know, but not the guy, you know, he, if the whole night is ifing his wife, she is a child. He go to his son, he flirt with the wife when the husband is not there. And then he said to her, so praise be to Allah, the one who made my heart flip for you. So there's millions of articles written by the Muhammadan about how amazing Prophet Muhammad. He is the best of mankind. The best of mankind is a pervert, and he was going advice to pervert too. Even if you are not a pervert, Muhammad, he was trying to make you a pervert. Uh, if you remember, There is many stories of Muhammad encouraging his men to marry children. So you see the, the Muslim here in the translation, they are talking about marrying a virgin. Uh, but this is not really what it's about. It's not just about virgin. It's about children. He is asking them to have sex with the children. This guy here, his name is Jabir, as you see in the, in the story. 
Muhammad, he asked him, and he is one of his companions, and he used to go to war. Muhammad sent him to war. So maybe to sleep with his wife too. Actually, Saud bin Tudama, he sent her husband, husband to war, and he got her. So, uh, he asked Jabir, Did you marry Jabir? He said, yes. Okay, did you marry a woman or a child, Jaria? Little one. The guy, he said, I married a woman. The Muslim translation says, why don't you marry a young girl? You might ask yourself, well, this doesn't mean anything. Young girl, this is English. Young girl, well, all, we, oh, all men, they like to marry young women, right? But young girl, maybe she is like maybe 17, maybe 16, maybe 15. No. You will continue reading the story. You will see that the man, he have a bunch of orphans live in his house. Either they are the children of his father or his brother. And then he explained, he said to the Muhammad, Muhammad well, you know what? In the fight of Ahud, hmm? Abdullah, he died, and he left nine or seven daughters behind him. I therefore did not approve the idea of I should go bring a girl like them. Do you see it? A girl like, like them. The person who keep posting the same Arabic thing, my friend, we saw it. El Masih, do me a favor, stop posting again and again, otherwise I will block you. We are not blind. People are not stupid. Don't act like Muslims. Okay, he keep posting. I think he did not hear me yet. Let me give him time out. If you repeat that after that, just admin block him. So he is saying, I could not bring a girl like them. They are orphan. I'm not going to bring a girl. If we go in the Quran, you will see even Muhammad encouraging Muslims to if the orphans. You see, when Muslims, they speak about charity, never give a Muslim an orphan to live in his house. Because he will F the orphan. Chapter 4, four verse number 3. If you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan, then go and F women. Do you see it? If you fear that you cannot deal justly, and the, the, some Muslim they will say to you, see the Prostam says justly. Justly is about just offering them the same, uh, just offer them food and clothing. Because Muhammad himself, he was not just. If you remember the story of, uh, of Muhammad, wives, the wives, they were complaining about Muhammad that he was not treating them equally. And they sent to him many messages. The wives, they went there. Even his daughter, they sent her to him. All what they were asking Muhammad, why you treat Aisha differently? It says here, and this is Sahih Hadith, the Muslim, they cannot say, this is a fabrication. And this is the title, look at the title. When a man loves one of his wives more than others. Do you see? So, according to the filthy Muhammad, he loved Aisha more, but this is not love, because love a man, he love a woman. He don't love all women in the world. And this is a lust. So this a pervert man, he liked children, as we saw from the previous hadith. So now, because she is the youngest, she is the child. So he is the pervert, and he, she is the perfect one. So she is in control. So the wives of Muhammad, they gather together, and they ask Fatima, his daughter, to go and ask him to treat them equally. All what they want is just treat them equally. You see, it says here, Aisha, she said to him, your wives have sent me, and they are, are urging to be equitable. They are not urging, like asking for special treatment. No, 
just treat all the women equally. So the Muslim, they claim that in Islam, you cannot marry more than four unless you are treating them equally. But as you see, Muhammad, again, is a pervert man. He is mistreating his wives, and he don't treat them equally. And if you read the whole story, and the story in the front of you, and this is the reference, you will find that Muhammad refused to treat them equally. And he told his wife, his, his daughter, which he is not really his daughter, Muhammad cannot have kids, uh, after many, many argument, you know, uh, then Zainab, the, daughter, the, 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 the wife of his son, who became later in the bed of Muhammad, she came to Aisha and they start fighting with her. And the wives are fighting. Uh, and you can read the story here. And Muhammad was excited watching the fight between two of his, his wives. And still Muhammad, he take the side of Aisha. And Aisha, she insulted me. And she started to think that he, she would disapprove. And I respond to her. So I insulted her. And then I soon, I silenced her. I silenced her. Then the Prophet said to her, she is the daughter of Abu Bakr. So now the two wives of Muhammad, they are shouting, effing each other, saying dirty words to each other. And Muhammad is enjoying the fight. Takbir. And then when Aisha, she won because she screamed more, Muhammad, he said, you know what? She is the daughter of Abu Bakr, which means she is the man. So as you see, this is the filthy Muhammad, who the Muslim, they claim that he is the best of mankind. He's a scumbag. He have no ethic, he's a child molester, he's a criminal, he's a killer, he's a slave owner. Everything wrong in this world is Muhammad. And yet you will find a bunch of liars making articles that Muhammad was the best of mankind. And actually Muhammad, after all this conversation about how good he is in sex, Muhammad, he could not even make one of his wives have a child even though the Muslim, they say he did, he did, but all of us, we knew he never. And we have a proof that Muhammad even cannot make his wives have orgasm. Who is the witness? How we can prove that? You know, thanks to God, uh, we have Muhammad, he is a trashy and his wives are no better. You know, you know how trashy a woman is when she go and she starts speaking about what her husband do in the bedroom right this is a trashy woman so and what kind of a woman she will go to a man and she will tell him i was dreaming about having effing with somebody or touching myself and then uh asking a man who is a stranger should i wash my vagina and this is exactly what the story in front of us is saying so the woman she saw a dream and uh, or maybe and she's awake touching herself excuse my language uh, and she said to him, Allah is not ashamed of the truth. Yeah, she is a hooker. She is a whore like the prophet. Is, is any washing necessarily for a woman when she has sexual, sexual dream? The prophet, he is expert. Just ask him about that for free. He said, yes, <laughs> yes. But we just heard uh, David Wood in the video that the prophet, he had sex with all his wives and he did not have one bath until the end and then it says here yes when she signs of liquid um salama covered her face this is the wife of muhammad this is who this is the wife of muhammad the muslim in translation they are trying to cover up what um salama said she did not say do a woman have a sexual dream? She said, Do women have orgasm? If you change the translator, the same story, you will see the women she was saying, Do women have orgasm? <laughs> Here we go. You see, we just changed, just to show you how they lie, they tried to cover it. This is the Sahih Hadith, Sanal Ibn Niyaja. The wife of Muhammad, she said, after she covered her face, after Muhammad, he says, if she see this charge, then let her perform a bath. Um, Salama, the wife of Muhammad, she said, Oh, Messenger of Allah. 
<laughs> Does really this happen? You know, what really happened? This woman have a discharge. Does the woman have discharge? Muhammad now he tried to explain to her because obviously this woman she never saw the sperm of Muhammad and she never have an orgasm herself. So Muhammad he said to her, explain to his wife, yes, the man water is white and thick and the women water is thin and yellow. Whichever of them comes first, the baby will look like the parents. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a stupid fraud prophet because whoever comes first, what does this have to do with the look and the gender? So uh, uh, the wife of Muhammad, obviously, she never ever had orgasm and she did not even know what orgasm mean. She don't know. And as you see, this is a very sahih hadith, you know. And uh, uh, the Muslim, they say to you, oh, this is not about male and female, Christian princess line. Well, the hadith in the front of you, and we can read them, you know. Here we go. It's the child will be a boy. The child will be a boy. You see? They, they try always to cover the stupidity of their prophet. They do their best. Because this is, this is uh, what the question of the Jew. Supposedly a Jewish man, he came to Muhammad, and he said to him, uh, what make the child, you know, resemble the parents like to be male or female? Muhammad now, he come with the answer coming from his God and he is the expert. He became a PhD in biology. So when, when the Muslim, they say that Muhammad is the best of mankind, in which way? How? Even when he decided to go to war against the Roman, the Muslim, they say to you that the Muslim, they went in war to defend themselves. Other Muslims, they tried to fix the lie. They say to open countries so we convert them to Islam. The fact, Muhammad, he says, attack the Roman so you can get the blonde girls. And I will show it to you from their own official website. And you know, the funny is, uh, when you show the Muslims their stories, the first response for the Muslims, he's a liar, he's a liar. You show it to them from their website, he's a liar. You show it to them from the Quran, he's a liar. You show it to them from Tafsir, he's a liar. The denial, the denial of those people is additional proof that Islam is a fraud. You see, a person who is proud about his belief, he will not deny his belief. Is that correct? Why a person, he will deny a belief, he deny it only if he is ashamed of it. If his belief is filthy, then he would deny. And this is why we see the Muslim keep saying, this is a weak hadith, this is a da'if hadith, this is a strong hadith. Any hadith, any story written by them, printed by them, translated by them, published by them, taught in schools by them, but in the front of you, we do not know it. We never heard of it. This is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And I will show you the link in the banner so you can see. This is Saudi Arabia Education. This is government. Government of Saudi Arabia University. And this is Tafsir al Tabari. And we are going to use Prophet Google, peace be upon him, to do the translation, which Allah cannot do. I mean, look at how amazing Google. Can Allah speak to us in other language other than Arabic? No. Google can. Almost all languages in the world. So who is Allah? The God who he claimed that nobody knows the, if it's going to rain tomorrow or not, it's except him, which is proving the stupidity. Who knows what is inside the womb? And he is making a challenge about it. And then here it says that there is a person 
and this is page number 195 in the book of At-Tabari. Uh, when Muhammad, he said to his men, let us act the woman and get the blondie girls. I'm going to post the link for you. And you can, you yourself, you can search for it. Like now here, it's up here, Hayat number 1678. It's up here again. <clears throat> Hadith number 16786. This is 16785. And it appear again <clears throat> here in 16788, etc. And this is all is Sahih. So I'm going to use Google in front of your eyes. Translate to English. And all what you need to do, it says here, uh, size, uh, attack the book, invade the book, and size the daughters of the Asfar. Asfar means the blonde, yellow. You know, the savage Muhammad, he don't even know. Uh, uh, he don't speak with Arabic. Because Asfar is a stupid word to say, really. You know, there, there is Asfar is uh, like gold, you know. Asfar. Asfar is not really a, a color to describe the blonde people. So he's a stupid even in, in the language. So he said, invade Tabuk so you can capture and rape and if the white, blonde, yellow women. A man from them, they call him the grandfather, he said, excuse me, don't tempt me with, don't tempt us with women. Are you taking us to war because of women? This man is decent. Muhammad, he accused him to be a hypocrite. He is a hypocrite. So if there is one decent, he says something to oppose Muhammad, and I'm sure Muhammad later, he did get rid of him, killed him. So he said, excuse me, are you telling us to go and attack the Roman just to get women? Muhammad, he point his finger at him, and he said, Allah told me this, that you are hypocrite. You are a bad person. You are making excuse not to go to war, claiming that you don't want to be tempted by women. But you just told them, attack the Roman and get the blonde girls. You did not say attack the Roman so we can spread Islam. He said attack Roman, the Roman, and get their women. Let me post the link for you. And this is again the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. It's going to come to you in Arabic, but all what you need to do, you can click in the side of the page, and you can, you know, <clears throat> actually the admin is posting it already, thank you. And then you click at English translation. So when the Muhammadan, they speak about Muhammad, the greatest prophet, how truthful those people are? You tell me. Is he really the best of mankind? or the worst, the evilest, the disgusting, the pervert, the pedophile, the criminal, the thief, not to mention how many, the Muslim themselves are proud about how many times Muhammad, he jumped in the highway and his men, and they took and they robbed everybody in the highway. And they say to you, they are doing that because the tribe of Quraysh, they kicked them out from the city, so they lost everything. The fact, that even the story says that Muhammad and his, he took his slave with him. What loss? He lost what? You see, all days, you do not need to take a mortgage to have a house. Those are Bedouin. Those are literally Bedouin. Today, if you leave a house, if you leave an apartment, it might cost you your life saving. At that time, all your life saving is movable. It's either animals or the slaves, and Muhammad, he owned many of them. So Muhammad, he went out, and most of the ones who were with him, they were the slaves they owned, so they lost nothing. But Muhammad was a thief. Muhammad is a thief. Uh, we have uh, somebody saying, uh, open Skype, Nathan David, are you a Muslim, Nathan? Why you want me to open Skype? Are you a Muslim?
As you see, this is a very disgusting man, trashy man, low class man, and the Muslim they worship him as God. Trying to they speak too much about his good, but the second you start reading, and remember what do you see in English is not even one percent of what it is in Arabic. The garbage in Arabic is way beyond. This is why I'm using a you know a garbage uh, of the uh, official website of Saudi Arabia. And I had to use Google Translation. I'm not going to keep you here long, but as you see, my friends, this is the most disgusting, filthy man in earth. His name is not Muhammad. Muhammad is the praised one. He changed his name to Qathm, from Qathim to Muhammad, and he wanted to replace Jesus. He is the devil himself. By making himself Muhammad, he chose to be called God. Because the praised one is God. No man is to be praised. The Muslim, they claim that they are not mushrikeen, which means they are not polytheist. But as you see, even the name of the man which they worship, his name is the praised one. How they can be not worshiping a man and then their prophet, his name is the praised one. If Muhammad is the praised one, who is Allah? He is the praised two? Who is Jibreel, the praised three? Muhammad is the praised one. So for how long their lies will work? That depends on you, and how much you share our videos and how much you may comment and bring people more to listen and to hear. And by the way, I just want to remind you, I don't know if you saw my post in, uh, in Patreon, the coward Zakir Naik, he made a copyright claim. I mean, you are a potato. You are literally a potato. You don't dare to debate us. And why you are afraid of sharing your video, as long as your video is good? Copyright? Potato, Zakir Naik. You see, a Muslim who teach, and then people they have, uh, uh, he sh you should enjoy, you know, you should be happy, the Christian sharing your video. Did you say something wrong on your video? Is that why you want to flag it? You don't want people to see how stupid you are? So you go to YouTube and you flag it? That's me, you're ashamed of yourself. What did you, what did you say there? Ah, we got you busted. As usual. And by the way, Zachary Naik, I do not need to use your video to expose you. I just can't call you. Brother and sister, Prince and Prince claim that I did flag the video. This is absolutely a fault. I threatened him to tell me the reference and to tell me the proof. In Zachary Naik, it's in the front of you on the screen, man. It says copyright from YouTube. How I can make this? Prince and Prince, first of all, the devil, he came to the Prophet Muhammad in the shape of the brill. And it's very possible that somebody, the devil, he came to YouTube in the shape of Zachary Naik. Is that kind of like, the devil will take your shape? I mean, he could not find better shape than yours. Come on, think about it. Prince, Prince, you get the point. Actually, maybe when I'm waking sleep, because sometimes I walk sleep. Is that kind of like, what wake sleep? What you know? You are always asleep. Don't you see yourself? You say stupid things. You debate stupid things, and you lie a lot. So do you lie even when you are asleep? Prince, Prince, things happen. And this is a very famous statement in USA. That thing happened. Is that correct? So now, you did the flag my video. And what you did? Nothing. I'm here. You are not. Listen, Prince. I swear by Allah that Allah will strike you with uh, uh, lighting. Uh, with what? With lighting. Okay, it was lighting. Lighting from the sky? Exactly. Or Allah, he might send some hail and hit your head. Hail? Exactly. Oh, you see, you remind me, the Quran says that the lighting is an angel. 
chapter 13, verse number 13. So how Allah will hit me with lightning if the lightning is an angel? Here's the prince. First of all, this angel, he is lighting, which means he is very lighting. What? Hold on. Is he an angel or he is electricity? How he is an angel and Allah will hit me with lighting. Isn't it you, Muslim, you say that Mr. Lighting is an angel and he is in charge of the sky and he have 70,000 angels in each side when he moved the first in his fire belt and he have a fire belt to lead the cloud with it? Listen, Prince, first of all, this is explaining is very accurate and proven scientifically. Okay, this, okay, so it's proven scientifically. So how Allah will hit me with lighting if it's an angel? Zakir? Hey, Zakir now is flagging my video for copyright because I called him and he says his voice. <laughs> oh, Abdul. Oh, Abdul. What are you going to do? What are you going to do when the truth comes to you? What are you going to do when the Messiah come back and then he will ask you, you pervert, you follow a pervert? A child molester? Where is your dignity? Where is your humanity? Where is your mind? Where is your brain? The angel, the thunder is an angel. And Allah, he sent hail from mountains in heaven. And you know, the funny is, the Muslim, they try to cover it up. Like if you go to those verses about the hail as an example, you will see the Muslims, every Muslim, he tried to add things, bracket, upper, forward, under, word. Here, push it there, push it there, put lips, stick, duct tape. I mean, Home Depot and Walmart, they are out of duct tape. All to cover the stupidity of the Quran. When the Quran is saying clearly in Arabic that Allah, he sent hail from mountains in heaven. You will see the Muslim translation doing their best, every translation almost. Look at this one here. I think this is the best between them. It says here, and Allah, he sent down from the sky, mountain mouse of a cloud. Does it say here? It's really, it says mountain mouse of a class, a cloud? This one says? We change the translator. This is a translation of what? Yusuf Ali. Let us go to a different idiot. Uh, what this name's guy? Wahadouin? <laughs> All of this is a name? All of this is the first name. Okay, Khan. Okay, Wahadina Khan. All right. He sent down from the sky mountain masses of a cloud. Okay, what is the cloud? Where is the word the cloud here? Let us go. What is the word? You know, I mean, mountain of cloud. It says from mountains. Change the translator. We will keep changing the translation until one of them he slipped. Now, this is a translation. This is what uh, what his name, Ultimate Fatih, read for me, just to make us think that he, he speak Arabic. This was the Muslim they read for you, by the way, to make it for you believe that they, they, they speak Arabic. They don't. Huh. All of them, anyway, you will see all of them only one after one saying the same that there is a, a mass cloud and, uh, hold, hold, hold on. and he sent down out of heaven mountain in which there is hail who is this translator finally there's one of them here a little honesty do you see there's no cloud here in this part it is hail coming out from mountains in heaven what the name of this translator Karabula, Darwish, Karabula, what's wrong, Karabula? The Muslim, this guy is getting you busted. Karabula got you busted. Let us go and see the interpretation and get them busted more. Chapter 24, verse number 43. Remember, the best man, Muhammad, was the best in weather too. He knew that the thunder is an angel, as you see. He knew that hail is coming from mountain is heaven. I mean, come on. He is the best even in weather news. He knew everything about weather. Where the hail coming from? What is the thunder? He knew it all. He is the best in everything. Cooking too, even in cooking, by the way. 
I mean, the guy who ordered his followers to drink camel urine. What do you want more? The best drink ever. So, chapter 24, verse number uh, 43, 24. <clears throat> This is the translation of the Muhammadan here, we showed you, and now we will go to the interpretation. Read with me. He sent down from heaven, mountain wherein there is hail. He said, he sent down hail from mountains in heaven. Do you see it? Do you see it? Why in their Muslim translation they keep adding clouds and, you know, just to cover the stupidity? The Muslim Abdul is translating the Quran. You look at this, like, what the heck? Everybody will read this, will die laughing at the Quran. We have to change it. We have to fix it. We have to add the cloud. and we're... It says it clearly. And this is Ibn Abbas, the cousin of Muhammad himself. The only one Muhammad, he hired him to explain the Quran to the Muslims. He prayed to Allah saying, May Allah make Ibn Abbas the ink of the nation, the ink of knowledge. And this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan, which means this website officially owned by the king, which is a fraud king, by the way. This guy, he claimed to be the son the, from the grandsons of Muhammad. And that explains why he's a fraud. Royal of Ahlul Bayt, you know, they became royal now. Kings, royals, you know, this, you see what the business can do? The guy, he claimed to be a prophet. You claim that you are from his family. Now you are a king. And he got his salary not from Allah, he got his salary from Israel and from USA CIA. If you remember when the when one of uh, ISIS, he explored himself, or Al-Qaeda, he explored himself in an office for, ISIS, for, for the CIA in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, the one was injured inside the office was the prince, which is the, uh, uh, the brother of the king. All of them, they are CIA member. So, as you see, this is what it's meant. How many words are mentioned in the Quran? 365 times. So it's a miracle. Well, even if that is true, that means the, the calendar of Allah is wrong. If Allah mentioned the word day 365 in the Quran, then the day in Islam is not 365. That means Allah is stupid. And same time, those numbers are fabricated. You know, there's no, no, no such a thing. Uh, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, uh, uh, Muslims are desperate to find to find something in their book. As you see, what okay, let us say the Quran mentioned the word day 365 times. And the word night 365 times. And the word shit 20 times. And the word non shit is 20 times. The word piss is 20 times. The word non piss is 20 times. Let us say, you know, just for the sake of argument. What we would do with this? Because this is anyone can write, anyone can, if he have a plan, he can write, he can add a word in equal number. This is not like raising somebody from death. This is writing a book. So, you know, because they are so desperate, they try to find something to make their book respected. But as you see, there's nothing respected there. It's just a stupid book. And, you know, the 365 proving that the calendar of Allah is wrong because the, the calendar, the, uh, the most accurate, there's no, there's no real accurate calendar, you know, there's no perfect calendar, but the most accurate uh, is, uh, is uh, the, not the Muslim using. However, uh, the, the, the Arab before Islam, they used to fix the calendar, you know, because they understood, they learned that from the Jews, that this calendar is not perfect, it's not good. So they have to add more days to the year to fix it, at least every two or three years to fix it. Muhammad, 
uh, he decide that this is an act of shaitan. What, what is the act of shaitan? Is to add time to the calendar. And this is why you see Ramadan of the Muslims because of the stupidity of Muhammad. Ramadan sometime come in July, sometime come in March, sometime come in December, sometime every year will change. Every year it must it must be changed. Why? Because the stupid Muhammad he decide that he don't want this, he don't like it. And mostly because it was about a delay of an occasion he want to celebrate. So the Arab, they have a delay to fix the calendar. Muhammad, he don't want that to happen. So just for his benefit, he canceled the calendar, which can correct the calendar and make it respectful. Muhammad, he destroyed it. And, you, he, he, and he claimed that he received an order from Allah about it, that this is an act of shaitan. This is from shaitan to make you kafir. Chapter 9, verse number 37. So when the, when the Arab, they used to fix the calendar and they add date, dates, dates or weeks to the calendar to fix it, uh, Muhammad, he can make it unlawful. And the one who do that, he is a kafir and he is following shaitan. All right? And, uh, and the reason actually, he, he wanted to kill he wanted to kill his enemies. So, because there is a few months, the Arab, you see the Arab, they have a rules, and they used to be way more respectful than Muhammad. Muhammad is a scumbag, literally. So there are certain months, they don't fight, they don't kill. So Muhammad, he want to kill them. Now they are weak. If we give them some time to increase, if we respect the rules, you know, they might, uh, you know, get stronger. Now we need to attack. So, but his followers, they said to him, but we cannot. What about the honor of respect for those uh, tradition? Muhammad, he have as usual, the way to change things. Just tell them Allah said. So he gave them a verse from Allah, which is him. Changing the time and the date and the calendar. Chapter nine, verse number 37. And you can open the interpretation so you can read what is behind this is story. So even the calendar Muhammad, he's crude. This is how stupid, how evil this man is. Do you see? The best man is the best fraud. Ramadan is supposed to be one night? No. Ramadan is a practice of Asabian, and they are people from Iraq. Uh, they, you know, as, as, as the Ramadan is a is a, a celebration for the new moon, the new moon. This is why, and it was thirty days or less than thirty, depending in the the, the the month. So they go by the moon. When the moon disappears, when the moon can come back, the crescent moon. This is why you see that Muhammad. Uh, he did not say you fast Ramadan. He says. You start fasting Ramadan when you witness the new moon. When you witness the new moon. If you go to chapter 2, verse number 185, you see the Muslim, they say, they translate the word shahr as a word mean month. Today is used as a word shahr because, uh, as a month, because nobody follows the moon no more. But in fact, the word shahr is a word mean moon you can go right now and check in the hebrew calendar or aramic uh, aramic uh, aramic or hebrew dictionary shahar is a word mean moth this is why it says whoever sees witness witness you cannot witness a moth we cannot witness time we cannot see it that's why the muslim they have to cite actually that's not the word witness here is not even right whoever sight the moon sight the moon if you change the translation here you will see right away how everything changed. Let us go to the front translator, another, another idiot.
in this in this here translation look what he says so whoever of you cite the crescent of the first night not of the month of the moon you cite the moon you don't cite the month and is it true that the muslim decide the moon to start ramadan is that correct guys this is why muhammad his god name is lah lah was one of the gods worshipped by the sabian the sabian they have uh, uh, ranks of god you remember there's a guy uh, ultimate fart he called me in the other day and he said that uh, allah he have a higher rank society and you want to remember i hang up on him because the muslim i debate muslims about what they believe now not about what the root of islam is so this guy is saying he's not really lying uh, islam is based in sabian sabian they believe that there's ranks angels are creators we were talking about when Allah, he said he is the best of the creators. So he said, yes, there's a creator's angel are creator too. This is exactly what the Sabian they say. So the Sabian, if I go, like if I open now the book of the Sabian, it's called Kenza Rabba. Kenza Rabba. Let me open it. Kenza mean a treasure. Rabba coming from the road a rub. This is the book Kenza Rabba. The book of the Sabian. And actually, if you read it, let me make, let me let me resize it. Hold on. If you read it, or you start reading it. You will find yourself you are reading the Quran. It's the same method, the same way, nothing different. Let me see if I size a page, one page at a time. Uh, ah, this is for the screen. That's not what you want. Okay, how we can zoom in. Hmm. Right here. Uh, if you read it, you will see that the 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 book have the same tone, the same as the Quran. In the name of the Living Al Azim, who Al Hayy Al Azim, Al Basir, Al Qadir, Al Alim, Al Aziz, Al Hakim. This is all in the Quran. Al Hayy Al Azim. البصير القدير العليم العزيز الحكيم All of this is in the Quran And you will see it's in the same as Muhammad statement with the same letter Here you notice in this in the book here <coughs> it says al atharin Al-Uthariyin. Those are the high rank angels. Those are creators. And Allah is the boss. Al-Muqimu fi malakutihi. Al-Adilu fi jabarutihi. This is exactly what the Quran says. Now, maybe, uh, you know, I mean, if we want to go in details, deep in details, that would be too much academic for many and too much heavy duty information. Uh, so, we, you know, we try always to share what is enough for you uh, to expose this garbage cult. Okay. Any other question? Sabian English translation, I don't know. I can give you a link for their official website, but I don't know. You know, remember there was once uh, we received a, a call from a Sabian. Who remember? I don't know if any of you copy it. 
uh, you see the, the Muslims, they target them. You remember the Yazidi? The Yazidi, when you see they speak about the Yazidi, they read their women, those are the Sabian. So uh, the Yazidi, they have in their belief, uh, they believe that shaitan, like the Muslims accuse them that they worship shaitan. And somehow they do. So what they do, they uh, they make shaitan, let us say, they fear shaitan. So they try to make shaitan happy, like not to be harming us. Because he is the one who is in charge of the earth. So uh, uh, this is what gives them a very bad reputation that they are people who worship shaitan. But in fact, Muhammad, he is was following them, and he is just copying them. Uh, anything else? Anyone? Have you been in Israel? No. And I don't want to go. Let us see. I don't like to go anywhere in the Middle East. It's a cursed land. Oh. All right. So do we have any uh, serious question? <clears throat> Anything? You want the link? I took the Prophet, look at the moon. Video, please. Just search for it. Description. The description of Prophet Muhammad. And you will see the image of that man. You will find it right away. What is your take on Palestine? There is nothing is called Palestine. You see, Palestine as a land is exist, yes. But those who deal with there, the Arab, are not Palestinian. Palestinian and the Arab are something different. So, you know, they occupy the land and they hijack the name as usual. So the Arab, they come, they occupy a land and the land was called, let's say, Palestine. They call themselves Palestinian. They come to Egypt, they occupy Egypt, but Egypt is the land of the Egyptian. They don't speak Arabic, they are not Arab, they are African, and they call themselves Egyptian. This is the trick always. They occupy a land and then they hijack the land name and they claim that they are the original citizen of the land. Uh, guys, don't ask me questions that have nothing to do with my topic. What Donald Trump have to do with me? What I, you know, I vote, I vote Christian. I don't vote for Trump, which means if there is two donkeys, one of them, he is better for the Christian. I vote for the one who is better for the Christians. I don't vote for Trump or Biden. I did vote for Trump, but not because he's a good person, but because we have a very other horrible person. Otherwise, both of them, they are bad. Uh, the praised born eternal servant of God, that is Jesus right, Muhammad, Abdullah, Khadija, Khwailid, Rafia means just uh, that's it showing what no one I, I, sometimes I read people to comment I have no idea what they mean speak to me in a language I understand if you want me to make a comment about what you say everybody knows that Egypt is the land of the Coptic it is the Coptic land it's not a secret and the Coptic don't speak a single Arabic word and until now they have their own language and they are more than 20 millions they come to a Coptic, they force a huge number of the Coptic people to convert to Islam. But the one now who claim to be Egyptian, they are the Arab, those are not, uh, they are not African, the Arab are not African. Furqan. You see, Furqan supposedly, it's mean like the one who show you the guidance, like the, the clear guidance, the clear, etc. But there is a book actually, it's called uh, Al Furqan. There's a book actually made by an ex Muslim. I don't know if I can find it. Uh, 
as I remember, I think it was written by ex-Muslim or I don't know who, who wrote it. Uh, <clears throat> Let us see. Yeah, there is many, look like, you know, I'm trying to find the book I'm looking for. There's many people wrote a book like this. What's such a name? Uh, but the book I'm looking for, I cannot find it. <clears throat> but you, you notice that the Quran is a very stupid book. It says here, that we gave Moses the scriptures and we gave him the the, the Furqan. <laughs> and the Muslim, they say that the Furqan was given to Muhammad. But as you see here, it says to Moses too. So, you know, uh, uh, the, the Quran is a very, very stupid book. You know, very confusing. Muhammad, he throw words just to, for the sake of uh, making a rap song. This is why the meaning does not exist. It's meaningless, you know? Any other question? Do you like songs in church? Well, you know, uh, traditional churches, they sing. Like if you go in the Middle East, uh, uh, Christian churches like Aramaic churches, they sing the whole Bible, not only they sing, they sing it the whole Bible. The whole Bible is a recitation of song. Uh, well, why not? You know, as long as you are glorifying Lord with respect and love, it doesn't matter how you do it. Right? Quran is so wrong, why make religion out of it? Well, you know, the man, he got an army, and he conquered, and he forced people to convert to Islam. And this is why there is a chapter in the Quran. It's called uh, uh, Al-Fatih. When the victory came, people, they enter into Islam like waves, like, like an ocean. So when, when the people, they enter into Islam, when the victory came. This is the chapter of the victory. So when Muhammad became victorious by the sword, people, they enter Islam by sword. So, and then who dare to leave? And then you join the gang because you find yourself either you die or you join the gang. The gang grow. They attack other nation. And then they force the same nation they just attack. Either you join us to attack the neighbors so we can treat you better. We won't, we won't treat you the same as we are, the Arab. But we will treat you better now because you are a Muslim. You are a soldier for us. All right? And making religion out of something false, well, there is millions of them. Okay. Somebody asking me about Al Bukhari six two zero five. Well, you know, uh, obviously, you know, we know that the Bible says that the King of Kings is the Messiah, right? So Muhammad, he is saying that the most awful for Allah is the king, the one who called himself the king of kings. That is Satan hating Jesus. You know? That is Satan, and his enemy is Jesus. And you will see that Allah, he says, I am the king of kings. So, clearly, that Muhammad is trying to replace himself and his God by Jesus. So the most person Allah he hates is the one who called himself king of kings. Uh, and then Allah himself, he is calling himself the king of kings.
as you see here. Any other question? Why Muslim wear hijab, why other wear niqab? Depend in the whole uh, the household or where you live. Uh, like in some areas, the the government they force the the niqab, uh, the the veil. Some places you are free, so women they don't even wear anything. You know they don't wear even they wore a short skirt. Depend which country. You know the, how much freedom. Just give them freedom and you will see. And anyway, Muslim women usually when they go abroad. If they have no parents with them, there's no a brother, there's no husband, they wear a short skirt, their skin is showing, they go to night club, you name it. Uh, there is a hadith says Adam was made in the image of Allah. Well, this is a copy from the Old Testament. Uh, but the Muslim they say that Muhammad he don't he did not mean that uh, Adam. He was made in the image of Allah as look of Allah. They say that Allah was saying he made Adam in the image of Adam, which is silly to say. I mean, he made Adam in the image of Adam. I mean, have you ever heard stupidity? I mean, they don't know what to say. I mean, he created Adam in his image. So if you say that you are saying that Allah, he created Adam in the image of Adam, this is the most stupid statement ever. You know what I mean? So they try to avoid that Allah is a man, saying here he's a man, and he is. They are copying the, the, the Old Testament. God created Adam in His image, exactly word by word. So when they try to fix it and they say this stupid explanation, they say, "No, no, no. Allah is saying that He created Adam as Adam look. What the heck? What do you mean as Adam look? Do you know even how look Adam? And then they say to you, the Prophet he says. Allah, he made him 60 span tall. Even if he is 60 span tall, doesn't make any big sense. You are saying to me, Allah, he make Adam look like Adam? While the Arabic saying in front of us, Allah, even the English translation, Allah created Adam in his image. Anyway. And uh, you know, uh, if you if you search in uh, in Google, let us let us search just for fun. You will find the Muslims they have a graveyard for Adam in every country. I mean, look like this Adam. He died everywhere. Here I found, this is a grave of Adam and Eve, brother. Not Adam alone. They died next to each other. Look how beautiful it is. And look how tall it is. And the funny is, Adam and Eve, they are in the same height. Hmm, interesting. See how, how long the, the grave of Adam and Eve, brother and sisters? MashaAllah, MashaAllah. It's MashaAllah. Which one is Eve? Which one is Adam? There's one in white and one in green. I guess the white is, is Eve. And the people, they give money and donation. And, you know, it's a scam. It's just all a scam. Uh, and, and not only that. Let me show you. Just hold on. This is another grave of Adam, the same guy. The same guy, he have many graves. Look how tall the grave. It's like a subway sandwich, you know. Do you see how long? He's the guy, because Muhammad, he says he is very tall. It's like five floor building, you know. The same guy, he have many graves in every Islamic country. And look, this is a different one. This is Hadrat Qambit. Who the heck is Qambit? This is, it says here in English, 
the grave of her prophet Adam, peace out. This is a different one. Look how long, look, it's like a train, it's like a subway, it's like, you know. The same guy, they have a graves for him everywhere. Look at this guy here. Look at this one here. Uh, this is someone different. Prophet Amun. The sons of David. Look, look, guys, David. This is the son of David and his, gra his grave in Pakistan. It turned to be that David used to live in Pakistan, brother. Look, look what it says here. And just to show, I'm not making things up. Prophet Amun. David, his now he have a son. His name is Amun. Take a note. And this is his grave in Pakistan. Amun, Rabbi Amun. It turned to be David was a Pakistani. And all this time, those Christians, they were lying to us. They say he was a hero from the Jews. What a lie. We were living a lie, brother. Wake up. It's time to wake up. Let us go and do, you know, do a hajj to the grave of uh, David uh, and his son Amun in uh, Pakistan. He's a Pakistani and he speaks like Zakir Naik. Hmm? This one is what? Grave of what? This is a grave of what? Uh, the, same, look, the same guy, he have other grave. Hazrat Amun. Look, look, how many grave you have for the same guy? Look, this is the same Amun. Look, 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 look. This is different grave. The other one, his grave is in the middle of the room. This one, he have different, you know, the, the room is small. Uh, let, us, let us see the grave of Noah. Hold on. Hold on. Why some Christian, they accept homosexuality, transgender priest? Well, if you Muslims accept a prophet, he is a transgender and he is a homosexual. There is some people, they are like you Muslims. So why you don't complain about yourself? As long as you mention this. How come you accepted Imam 1400 years ago to be a homosexual? You see why you, you know, Muslims, how they got themselves busted? You are talking to Christian Prince. So look what you just did. For us, we don't accept. Those who, don't, who, who, who accept them? When you say accept, who accept them? I will never go to a church. The one who is in the church, he is breaking the one of the most important command of God. Who is going to go there? People will like him. But look what happened in the time of your prophet. In the time of your prophet, right away after he died. Uthman became the caliphate. Focus with me, Abdul. Hamoud. A man he come <coughs> to the caliphate Uthman. And he said, there is an imam, he pray on us, and he is a gay. He's a muhannath. Uthman, he said, well, do when people do good deed, do good deed, and when they don't do good deed, don't do good deed. <clears throat> the guy said to Uthman, but he is tempting us. Are you there, Hamoud? You ask for it, Hamoud. Have fun. I challenge you to show me where in the Bible that there is somebody was a gay and he was approved to be an imam or to be a priest or to be any of this. Just show me. Here we have your religion. This is the Caliphate Uthman. Right away, Muhammad he just died, which means Islam is fresh. They come to Uthman complaining about LGBT imam. And not only that, this guy, when he bent over, he tried to tempt them with his ass. He'd have a nice ass, may Allah ask you. And this is telling us that all the ones who they are in the mosque, they are gays too, because how a man can tempt you? Remember, those Muslims are coming to complain, saying that we have a leader. We have a leader. We are afraid of being sinful. Why? Because this leader is a leader of al-fitna, trial, affliction, etc. All of this because a man, he bend in front of them and he is a gay. Okay, what will happen? Because they are tempted. They are homosexual too. And we are afraid of being sinful and following him. Uthman, he said, as Salat, the prayer, is the best of the deed. So when people do good deed, you do the same. And when they don't, they do bad deed, avoid it. So Uthman, he did not help them. So what? He's a gay, he's a gay. He is your priest. 
And then as Zori said, listen carefully, in our opinion, one should not offer salat behind an effeminate person unless there is no alternative. Do you see it? So when you know you say, why Christians, why? We don't. That's a lie. Those are not Christians. Those are not Christians. Anyone who accepts that is not a Christian. But I see, I show you now that the caliphate of Allah, Uthman, this is your first pope. This is your first pope. The one who's chosen by you, the best of you. He approved the first homosexual imam. It's in the front of you. So stop crying. Anyone who do what is against in the Bible, he is no Christian, period. I answered you. They can call themselves a Christian. They can call themselves a church. They can call themselves whatever they want. They are not. But this is Islam. And not only that, you're a prophet himself is a homosexual. He dressed like a woman. He dressed as women clothes. He put lipstick. He put eyeliner. And he pee like a woman. And not only that, you're a prophet. He kiss men down their belly. And not only that, you're a prophet. He rub his chest with the back of a man in front of him. And they enjoy each other. And not only that, you're a prophet. He promised you that in heaven, There's a bazaar where there's no buying nor selling except pictures of men and women. And if a man, he like the image he enter it. And let me show you the hadith. When you are talking about homosexual, look who is talking. In the world today, people are free. They call themselves what they want. You know, somebody is a gay, he say, he's a Christian, but he's not. A Christian is the one who follow God. Jesus says, not everyone says to me, God, God will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. And the will of Jesus and the will of God is in the Bible. And this is your prophet to promise you, a magazine full of pictures of men and women. All right. Uh, Blaze official. Blaze official. He is challenging me. Who is, who is this Blaze official? He's a Muslim. He want to call me. Okay, I will call it just for Blaze official. <laughs> Let me, give me a second, I will open my Skype. All right, we are loading Skype. Uh, feel free, Mr. Official. You just give me a text and I will, I will call you back. All right. Uh, my Skype is open. So as you see, in the Muslim, they speak about things, but the fact they are the one who have it. Uh, would you consider a uh, Catholic as a cult? No, I don't. Why I wouldn't consider them? You see, Jesus said, uh, whoever believe in me, whoever believe in me, and he die, he will live. So as long they believe in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, they are Christians. Now, being a Christian, all of us, we know that all of us, we do wrong, right? So if we say that the Catholic are cult because they have images, well, don't you have your own images? I mean, all of us, we have our sin. Replace it with the image. So if somebody he have wrong, they, even the images they have, just because they love Jesus, not because they hate Jesus, even those images, is the purpose is to worship God. But all of us, we knew that this is a break the command where God says, don't make image for what is up in heaven or down in sky. So this is wrong, but doesn't make them not Christians. Uh, 
CP challenge most time, but when you we refute you, you run away. Right, this guy is a kid, I guess. Let us call him. 